Right now, though, let's talk about education because Serge Cafe is here with his executive head teacher at St Thomas the Apostle School uh, right here in London. It seems as though the Labour government has completely rolled over to the teaching unions. Uh, they've decided to change the way that uh, Ofsted uh, makes inspections. They've decided to change the way that timetables are drawn up. They're talking about getting rid of the times tables as well uh, and also getting rid of some grammatical lessons. Let's find out from Serge precisely what is going on. Serge, very good morning to you. Uh, good morning, Mike. Good nice morning. to see you. Welcome back to the fight. I guess you're back in uh, back in school. First week back. Yeah. Hope it's all going yeah. well. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm slightly worried that uh, that every single time the teaching unions are now asking for something, the government's given it to them. Yeah, well, I've got no time for the teaching unions. They don't care about the kids. Uh, I think, in my experience, over 40 years, uh, they're more interested in keeping bad teachers in the classroom. Yeah. So we don't get on. Uh, but before I start moaning about Ofsted, I must make it clear. It's vital that we have Ofsted. It must remember what Ofsted's about. It's about informing parents so that they can decide which school to send their kids to. Right. However, it's been a busted flush for a while. Mm. Not surprising when the head of Ofsted has never talked. Um, I think there's several things that they've now got an opportunity to put right. I'm pleased to say that the new head of Ofsted is actually an ex-ed teacher. So I'm hopeful that the changes will be made. But there needs to be proper scrutiny, and we need to know exactly what they're measuring. Enough of this faff on curriculum and everything else. Let's talk about what really matters to the kids and the parents. I've just been through my 40 or whatever day where the kids are coming in. I know you've got kids yourself, Mike. Well, how important is that day when they open the envelope to find out where their exams are? So let's start off with let's look at outcomes in schools, shall we? Yes. You know, uh, because if the outcomes are good, the chances are the leadership management is going to be good. The chances are that the teaching is going to be good. So let's start off with some objectivity. Let's cut out some of this subjectivity. Let's get a bit of credibility. I can't tell you the number of Austin inspections that I've had where you've had some inspectors coming in who, quite frankly, I wouldn't employ no credibility. Of course, you check up which schools they've come from, and they find, you find that their own schools are, are requiring improvement or worse. Yeah. You find that their position that they've held within that school is not particularly senior, and they're coming in telling me what to do in my school. So I think this is an opportunity. I want more objectivity. Clarity is key, especially for parents, so that they, I mean, I suppose the only plus for getting rid of this overall. Uh, judgment is that there's more chance that they will read the other chance the, the other judgments which must be kept but more objectivity and a chance to get it right yes and I mean the problem for me with some of these changes that are being made to the way that Ofsted is going to operate is that it seems to be all about protecting schools that might not be performing very well and kind of hiding the fact that they're not performing very well well that's my worry too I've been around long enough to remember before Ofsted yeah. when there wasn't any inspections. No one knew what the hell was going on in schools because right. no one was measuring. Well, we've got the measurements now. We've got clear attainment, you know, four pluses, five pluses, number of kids getting to great universities near levels. We've got attendance figures. We've got lateness figures. We've got all sorts of figures that are objective. So let's give us a guide. Let's tell the parents what's good, what's bad, what's ugly. I think the media have got a part to play here. Mm. Let's talk about progress eight a bit more so that people under understand what that measure means. Um, and let's get back to a bit of common sense. I know we talk about this quite a lot, yeah. common sense, but ain't that common. You know, Let's make <laughs> sure that the reports reflect what the parents will clearly understand. And at the same time, that will mean the schools will clearly understand what they're being measured on. I don't want anyone looking in my first aid cupboard to see if I've got enough bloody bandages mm. there. You know, let's look at the teaching. And in terms of health and safety, what hasn't been talked enough about, that poor lady that committed suicide following her Ofsted report, yeah. she actually failed her Ofsted on a health and safety factor. Now, I know schools, and so do you, that haven't been seen for 10, 12 years mm. because Ofsted haven't got their act together. Well, if health and safety is so important, take it out of Ofsted, and every school should be seen every couple of years to make sure they get it right. Yes. You know? Well, it shouldn't, and, it shouldn't uh, feed into any sort of report about their academic uh, ability, should it? Absolutely. Let's separate. And, of course, I, I do believe that Ofsted's too wide. Uh, I mean, it's pretty much an impossible job. Uh, they're doing secondary schools, 
primary schools, nurseries. They're doing uh, child minders. They're doing the prisons. Yeah. Let's split it up. Let's get the expertise where it belongs, and then you'll have a more credible uh, solution. Absolutely right. Now, there's a story here which has got nothing to do with education, but I just wanted your view on it. Um, apparently, four in ten people in this country don't like apologising uh, because they think they're never wrong. Now, I reckon that that applies to probably more than four out of ten politicians. Um, <laughs> but what do you teach your kids about admitting when you're wrong? Well, I tell you what, if they admit when they're wrong from a very early age, <laughs> they get a lesser punishment. It's a bit like pleading guilty, really. Yeah. You know, if I'm going to find proof to say that you've been a pain in the rear, all right, I'm going to come down a lot heavier on you than if you say, fair enough, I did wrong, and put your hand up to it. Again, common sense. Yeah. It's just the way you should bring up children. Uh, but, of course, our, our, our justice system are busy telling kids they get caught with, a knife, caught with a knife or out mugging, no comment. So what is going on yeah. in our society? I've had it for donkey's years. It really upsets me. You know, something needs to be done. Right, they talk about knives all the time, don't we, Mike? Yes. You know, so how is it we get sensible adults like me, and I know you, what you think the same, that when kids do wrong, and they will, guess what, they're kids, all right, get them to stand up for it, deal with the consequences of their actions, make sure that they understand this is not the right way to think. But if they go out mugging, and I've had this several times, they go out mugging, they get caught red-handed, you don't want an adult, a very educated adult, telling that kid, well... Plead not guilty. Um, we'll find a loophole to get you out of this. And surprise, surprise, maybe a couple of years down the line, they'll do it again right. because they haven't realised what they've done is their fault mm. and they need to take responsibility for it. You know, that's how I bring up my kids. That's how I push in my schools. And uh, it seems to work. But why we can't understand what we're doing to some of these kids in terms of not making sure, just making sure they take responsibility mm. for what they do. And when they go wrong, and they will have already said, they're kids for God's sake, let's make sure they understand there are consequences to what you do. It is your fault, and it's nobody else to blame. Absolutely right. Great to talk to you, Serge. What a breath of fresh air. We need to do this more often, I think. That's nice to see you. Serge Caffey there, uh, executive head teacher of St Thomas the Apostle School. Uh, if he was in charge of the Department of Education, I'll tell you what, uh, we wouldn't have any problems in schools at all. He's so sensible. It's brilliant, isn't it?